Hello, this is Sorin from Exam Help Lab. Today I'll be solving Chemistry Paper 2 AS Level Structured Questions 9701 Variant 2 October November 2019. Starting with question number 1. In the periodic table, the B block contains elements whose outer electrons are found in the B sub shell. Part A. Elements in the B block show a general increase in first ionization energy as the atomic number increases. Part 1. Draw the shape of a P orbital. So a p orbital has a shape of a dumbbell. Part 2. Write an equation to show the first ionization energy of silicon. So first ionization energy is taking the first outermost electron from the silicon atom. So silicon in gaseous state. An electron has been taken out from the outermost shell of silicon atom. So this becomes silicon ion with plus charge and still in gaseous state an electron has been taken out part 3 explain why there is a general increase in first ionization energies of the elements across period 3 so along the period atomic number increases And when atomic number increases, number of electrons increase in the same shell. This increase in number of electrons in the same shell is only possible when you are moving along a period. However, if you move along a group, number of electrons is still increase, but they get on farther shells. This increase in number of electrons in the same shell, this leads to shielding effect remaining same and thus nuclear attraction between electrons and nucleus increases. Part 4. Element A is in the P block. The graph shows the successive ionization energies for the removal of the first 10 electrons of A. State and explain the group of periodic table that element A belongs to. So it's group 3. That's because there is a great shift you see over here from the third electron removed to the fourth one. This indicates that there is a change in shell and fourth electron which is being removed here is actually from an inner shell so the reason for this is large increase from third ionization energy to fourth part b silicon is found in many compounds in the earth's crust silicon has only three natural occurring isotopes silicon of mass number 28, silicon of mass number 29, and silicon of mass number 30. Part 1 The table shows data for silicon 28, silicon 29, and silicon 30. A sample of silicon contains 92.2% of silicon 28. The total percentage abundance of silicon 29 and silicon 30 in the sample is 7.8%. The relative atomic mass of silicon in the sample is 28.09. Calculate the percentage abundance of silicon 30. Give your answer to one decimal place. Okay, so relative atomic mass of an atom with isotopes is this RAM means relative atomic mass of an atom with isotopes is its first isotomic mass, which is 28 over here. This gets multiplied with the relative abundance of that isotope in the atmosphere which is 92.2 plus the second isotopic mass of silicon which is 29 this gets multiplied by the abundance the relative abundance of that isotope in the atmosphere which is unknown to us so I'll assume that it has an abundance of X percent plus third isotopic mass of silicon which is 30 and this also gets multiplied by the abundance of its own in the atmosphere which is 7.8 minus x since 
the total percentage abundance of 29 and 30th is 7.8 and I assume that silicon 29 has an abundance of x percent so silicon 30 has an abundance of 7.8 minus x percent now this whole gets divided by 100 now when you substitute the RAM which is 28.09 and rearrange the formula you'll get a value of x as 6.6% I assume that silicon 29 has an abundance of x so 6.6% of abundance is for silicon 29 hence for silicon 30 it will be 7.8 minus 6.6 which is 1.2% part 2 silicon reacts with nitrogen gas to form si3 and 4 si3 and 4 is a solid with a melting point of 1900 degrees celsius it is insoluble in water and does not conduct electricity when molten suggest the type of bonding in and structure of si3 and 4 explain your answer so taking all three of these properties into notice you actually should think of strong covalent bonding as soon as you hear of si3 and 4 not conducting even when it's in molten state due to absence of mobile electrons because conductivity comes once it has uh, once the substance has got mobile electrons second is it having melting point of 1900 degrees celsius and this indicates that it has got a very giant molecular structure so three points each point will be given to three statements so for 1900 for a, for a melting point of 1900 degrees celsius it has got giant molecular structure for si3 and 4 not being a good conductor even when it's molten this indicates that this has got strong covalent bonds and the reason why si3 and 4 does not conduct electricity is due to absence of mobile electrons or delocalized electrons part c sulfur containing compounds such as c2h5sh are found in fossil fuels and produce sulfur dioxide when they are burned part one write the equation to show the complete combustion of c2h5sh so usually combustion products are carbon dioxide and water but in this question sulfur dioxide is an addition to the products so I should write C2H5SH this combines with oxygen and gives out the usual products which are carbon dioxide plus water plus in addition this time is sulfur dioxide now we should balance our equation so I'll add a 2 here a 3 here and 9 by 2 but to state why the presence of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere has environmental consequences describe one of the consequences on the environment so sulfur dioxide can get oxidized to sulfur trioxide which when reacts with water forms h2so4 and that causes acid rain so presence of sulfur dioxide can pose a really serious threat to um, uh, limestone buildings because uh, acid rain can actually ruin them the, this acid rain can also lower the pH of river which then becomes harmful for marine animals so I should write that it causes acid rain and this acid rain um, damages limestone buildings Part D, sulfur dioxide can react with ozone to form sulfur trioxide in two different reactions. Part 1, in one reaction sulfur dioxide reacts with ozone until a dynamic equilibrium is established. State and explain the effect of an increase in pressure on the composition of the equilibrium mixture. Uh, so there will be no effect on the composition of equilibrium in this reaction because there are two number of moles of reactant and exactly two moles of products forming. So it's all balanced. So I'll say that no effect because equal number 
of moles on both sides of equation. Part 2. In the other reaction, a different equilibrium is established at 300 Galvins as shown. Suggest a temperature needed to increase the yield of sulfur trioxide at equilibrium. Explain your answer. So, okay, so since forward reaction is endothermic as it is shown with the positive sign, uh, it means that temperature of surrounding decreases in the forward direction. So it would be favorable if we increase the temperature, let's say 500 Kelvin, uh, because that's what Leah Chetlier's principle says that if you make any change to reaction conditions like temperature, concentration and all, equilibrium which will shift to the side which nullifies that change. So I can mention any temperature higher than 300 kelvins, let's say 500 kelvins, uh, and I'll mention the reasoning to it. The reason is this, that our forward reaction is endothermic. So increasing the temperature will favor the, um, the forward reaction. Question number two, oxygen is the most abundant element in the Earth's crust. It reacts with other elements to form stable compounds, ions, and molecules. Part A, complete the table to give the formula and acid-base behavior of some of the oxides of the period three elements. So all metal oxides except aluminum oxide are basic in nature and non-metal oxides are acidic in nature. So sodium oxide is basic in nature. Aluminium oxide has a formula of Al2O3 and it is amphetoric, means it reacts with both acid and alkalis and form different products with it. Silicon is a non-metal, so when it reacts with oxygen, it forms an acidic oxide. And silicon has oxide has a formula of SiO2. Phosphorus has got nearly four oxides so you can write any of it this is also acidic in nature and so is sulfur trioxide bar b group two elements form stable hydroxides with general formula moh2 moh twice where m is the group two element Part 1. Beryllium hydroxide is an amphoteric compound that shows similar chemical reactions to aluminium oxide. State the meaning of the term amphoteric. So amphoteric oxides are substances which react with both acids and alkalis. So Part 2. Write an ionic equation for the reaction of magnesium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. Magnesium hydroxide is basic in nature, so a base reacting with, uh, with hydrochloric acid will give out water, salt plus water. The first step is writing your original equation, which I'll write here. So magnesium hydroxide, this is an aqueous state. Whenever you're about to write an ionic equation and you're taking the first step, which is to writing your original equation, don't forget mentioning the states. Plus HCl. This is also an aqueous state. This gives water, which is in liquid state, plus MgCO2. This is an aqueous state too. Now the second step is to balance your equation. So I need two moles of HCl on the left, two moles of water on the right. Now proceeding to third step, which is to break down all the aqueous stated substances into their ions, but leaving behind all the solids, liquids and gases. So I'll break down one, two and three compounds leaving behind H2O, H2O will remain as it is. So MgOH2 has an ion called Mg2+. We have got two hydroxide ions. We have got two we have got two hydrogen ions as well as two chlorine ions.
Now on the right side of the equation, we have got 2H2O will remain the same because that's found in a liquid state and we don't break liquid compounds into their ions. Plus Mg2 plus and two chloride ions. Fourth and the last step is to cancel all the common ions on both the sides of your equation. So, so Mg2 plus is on both sides of equation. So I'll cancel Mg2 plus and Mg2 plus here. Two hydroxide ions is not on the right side. Neither is two hydrogen ion. But two Cl minus is on the left and on the right too. Now I'm only left with two hydroxide ions, two hydrogen ions, and on the right I have two water molecules. I'll cancel all the twos because two value two is also common on both sides of equation. So finally, my ionic equation for this reaction is OH negative reacts with H plus. And this gives me water molecule. Part 3. Two methods of preparing str strontium hydroxide are shown. Okay, so strontium reaction 1 is strontium reacting with water. And reaction 2 is strontium oxide reacting with water. They both are giving the same products. State one difference between the observations you would make for reaction 1 and reaction 2. Okay, so whenever group 2 elements are reacting with water, just group 2 elements, they produce metal hydroxide as well as hydrogen gas. But when group 2 oxides, they react with water, they only give out one product and that is metal hydroxide. So I would say that an effervescent will be seen in reaction 1. Or to say that when strontium reacts with water. Part 4 state how the solubility of group 2 hydroxides changes down the group. So solubility of hydroxide increases as we go down group 2. Part C sodium peroxide reacts with carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in a 0.5 decimeter cube sample of air is 5.37 kilopascals at 20 degrees Celsius. But when calculate the amount in moles of carbon dioxide gas present in the sample of air at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the formula for this question is PV is equals to NRT where P over here is pressure in pascals V over here is volume in meters cube. N here is number of moles. R is a constant with a value of 8.314. And finally, T is temperature in kelvins. So our P is in kilopascals. We need to multiply that with 1000 to make it in pascals. This multiplies with our volume, since our volume is in decimeter cube, we need to convert that to meter cube. And the conversion is 1 meter cube has got 1000 decimeter cube. So I'll divide my 0.5 with 1000. This is equal to number of moles multiplied by 8.314. And again, multiplication. Our temperature is in degree Celsius. We need to convert that to Kelvin's. And 1 Kelvin is 273 degrees Celsius, so 273 plus 20 degrees Celsius. When you rearrange your formula, you'll get the value of N as 1.1 into 10 to the power of negative 3 number of volts. But to calculate the mass of sodium peroxide that would react fully with amount of carbon dioxide gas calculated in part 1. So mole ratio of sodium peroxide and carbon dioxide is 1 is to 1. So 1.1 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles of carbon dioxide would require 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles of sodium peroxide. Now that you have the number of moles of sodium peroxide which is 1.1 
into 10 to the power of negative 3 and you can calculate the MR of sodium peroxide which is 78 you can easily calculate the mass by multiplying moles with MR and that will give you a mass of sodium peroxide as 0 0.0860 grams Part 3. The peroxide ion has a single covalent bond between the two oxygen atoms. Each oxygen atom, each oxygen atom carries a negative charge. Draw a dot and cross diagram for the peroxide ion. Show outer electrons only. So a single covalent bond means each oxygen atom is sharing one electron with the other one. So there is this one oxygen atom and there is this another one. Both of them they share one electron with each other and oxygen has six valent electrons in its outermost shell so this one this one they're sharing one with each other this one is from the this oxygen atom and this one is from this oxygen atom and this this one for each oxygen atom is unpaired but remember they say that it has a charge of two negative or each oxygen atom carries a negative charge but each of the oxygen atoms has gained an electron from some other atom so that will be notified here Two negative charge actually denotes that oxygen atoms, both the oxygen atoms, they have gained two electrons from somewhere else. Question number three. A series of reactions for phosphorus and its compounds is shown. A part one. State what you would observe in reaction one. So chlorine gas is of green color. When it reacts with phosphorus and forms PCL5 that color goes so I'll write green color fades Part 2 state the type of reaction that occurs in reaction 2 reaction 2 is PCL5 reacting with water forming only forming just one product Phosphoric acid so this is hydrolysis because there is addition of water part 3 Phosphoric acid can be produced by direct reaction of phosphorus with nitric acid. Use oxidation numbers to show that this re reaction is a redox reaction. So a redox reaction is when both oxidation and reduction, they're taking place simultaneously. Over here, I see that phosphorus oxidizes from 0 to plus 5. So phosphorus oxidizes from 0 to plus 5 and nitrogen from HNO3 reduces from plus 5 to plus 4 Part B, reaction 3 is a neutralization reaction in which ammonia acts as a base. Part 1, explain how ammonia acts as a base in reaction 3. So reaction 3 over here, okay, ammonia reacting with acid, forming a product. Over here, see, I see that ammonia has gained a proton. That's why it has got a charge of plus 1 and 4 hydrogen atoms from 3. So I'll, I should say that ammonia has gained... A proton and forms NH4 plus part 2 draw the three-dimensional shape of the ammonium ion NH4 plus give the bond angle okay so nitrogen will be sharing its outermost electrons each with hydrogen atoms Nitrogen has got five valent electrons. Each of it will be shared with hydrogen atoms. And there will be a positive charge. And the bond angle for 
and H4 plus is Part 3 state the industrial importance of compounds such as NH4 plus H2PO4 minus. So this is an ammonium compound and ammonium compounds are of good use to plants. They can be used as fertilizers. Part C, PCL5 can be used to convert alcohols to halogenoalkanes. Part 1, write an equation for the reaction of ethanol with PCL5 to form ethane chloride. So, ethanol reacting with BCO5, this gives halogenoalkane, which is ethane chloride, plus POCl3 plus HCl. Part 2, state the type of reaction in part 1. This is substitution reaction. since Cl is a substitute to OH group in ethanol's structure. Part 3 halogenoalkanes can also be prepared by reacting alcohols with hydrogen, with hydrogen halides such as HCl and HI. HCl is prepared using NaCl and concentrated sulfuric acid. HI is, produced, is prepared by reacting NaI with concentrated phosphoric acid. Suggest why HI is not prepared by the reaction of NaI with concentrated H2SO4. So H2SO4 when reacts with NaCl, mind that H2SO4 is a strong oxidizing agent when it reacts with NaCl, it prepares HCl and this reaction stops right there. But if sodium iodide were to react with H2SO4, this reaction would make HI, however that reaction wouldn't stop right there. In fact, hydrogen iodide would ox oxidize to iodine gas again due to H2SO4 being a stronger oxidizing agent than hydrogen iodide. H2SO4 won't be, H2SO4 wasn't able to further oxidize HCl because this time HCl produced possesses more oxidizing power than H2SO4. So you should write that if NaI means sodium iodide had reacted with um, sulfuric acid, HI would oxidize to iodine gas because H2SO4 is a stronger oxidizing agent than hydrogen iodide. The rate of the hydrolysis reaction of halogenoalkanes with NaOH is dependent on the halogen that is bonded to carbon. State and explain the order of reactivity when NaOH reacts separately with ethyl chloride, ethyl bromide and ethyl iodide. So ethyl iodide reacts the quickest with NaOH and ethyl chloride would of course react very slowly due to greater bond length of chlorine to iodine in uh, ethyl iodide that makes it a weaker bond whereas that of carbon to chlorine bond in ethyl chloride is the strongest among all. So I should write that ethyl iodide reacts with NaOH fastest and ethyl chloride reacts slowest and the reason for it is that ethyl iodide has weakest bond whereas bond of ethyl chloride is the strongest and this all depends on the bond length basically. The bond length of uh, carbon to iodine of ethyl iodide is greater than the bond length of carbon to chloride in ethyl chloride. Question number four. Prenol is a naturally occurring organic molecule found in many fruits. It contains both an alkene and an alcohol functional group. 
Part A, prenol, can be formed by the reaction of G with NaOH. Complete the diagram to show the mechanism of the reaction between G and NaOH to form prenol. Include all relevant charges, partial charges, lone pairs, and curly arrows. Okay. So, C to Cl bond breaks heterolytically with Cl now having a negative charge and, a, and an electron lone pair. So this gets a partial negative charge and carbon over here gets a partial positive charge. A curly arrow with arrowhead towards chlorine because this is the one which has now gained a negative charge and a lone pair partial positively charged carbon atom will now be attracted towards hydroxide ion of NaOH which also breaks heterolytically and OH will be taking away both the electrons and will be carrying a partial negative charge so this now will be this OH negative ion will now be attracted towards C plus over here all right part b prenol reacts with steam to form a mixture of three isomers j k and l of molecular formula c5 h12 o2 part one when j is heated with excess acidified potassium dichromate six it forms an organic product which shows no reaction with 2,4 dnph draw the structure of j so the first step i'll take is to drawing all possible structures of product forming when prenol reacts with steam so prenol from part one reacting with steam it can give me this product this first my first expected product is this with oh being bonded to second carbon atom There is a chance that OH from steam may attach to this carbon atom or this carbon atom. So my second structure will be OH being bonded to the third carbon atom or I should say this one. My third structure can be the optical isomer of my second structure, which is this one. Okay, so excess acidified KMnO4 is an oxidizing agent which we mainly use in A-levels for alcohol oxidation. Um, there are three products possible when hot KMnO4 is added to an unsaturated carbon structure. Unsaturated by unsaturated, I mean that there is a carbon to carbon double bond present in the structure. Um, and those products are carbon dioxide along with water, acid and ketone. 2,4-DNPH, um, which is 24 Dinitrophenyl hydrazine is a reagent used to test presence of carbonyl compounds which are ketone or aldehydes. Um, if J shows no reaction with 2,4-DNPH, it means that J does not have a secondary alcohol because secondary alcohol oxidizes to ketone and when this is added to hot KMnO4, that would give me orange precipitate in 2,4-DNPH. While in the question it says that when J is heated with excess acidified potassium dichromate. It forms a product which does not give a positive result when it is added to 2,4 DNPH. So J has a structure like this with OH bonded to the second carbon atom. KL 
K and L are stereoisomers with molecular formula C5H12O2. K and L both react with both react when heated with excess acidified potassium dichromate to form M, C5H8O3. M forms an or orange precipitate on reaction with 2,4-DNPH part 2 give the structural formula of K and L. So as I had already drawn the three possible structures for the, for, uh, for the isomers, I know that K and L are these two structures. So my structural formula is going to be CH3 so my structural formula is going to be CH3 twice CH CH again and my hydro hydroxyl group is attached to the second carbon atom with CH2 and OH again part 3 name the type of stereoisomerism shown by K and L so this is optical stereoisomerism. Part 4. Give the balanced equation to present the reaction of KC5H12O2 with acidified potassium dichromate to form MC5H8H8O3. Use oxidation. Use O symbol to represent an atom of oxygen provided by the oxidizing agent. So, KMNO4 oxidizes alcohol. So, C5H12O2 uh, This is the symbol to represent an oxidation process happening. This gives C5H8O3 O3 plus a water molecule. I need to write 3 here and 2 here. I added water molecule on the right of the equation to balance my oxygen atoms. Part C1. Prenol contains an alkene functional group. Describe a chemical test to confirm the presence of an alkene functional group. Give the result of the test. So bromine water is best to check presence of carbon to carbon double bond. And it decolorizes from brown. Although you can also use um, cold acidified KMnO4, um, which turns purple to colorless if C to C double bond is present, but it's best to mention bromine water. Part two: Prenol can be polymerized to form polyprenols. Draw one unit. Draw one repeat unit of polyprenol. So the double bond of carbon to carbon breaks. Rest of the structure will remain the same with H here and CH2OH and the pi bond which breaks will now form two, sig two new sigma bonds then you put a bracket and but the isoprenol is a structural isomer of prenol the series of reactions shows how isoprenol can be used to form Q a sweet smelling liquid Okay, so reaction one is what you call hydrogenation, where two hydrogen atoms are added to the structure. Um, reaction two is oxidation of primary alcohol to carboxylic acid. This is the carboxylic acid formed. And the third reaction is esterification, and that is forming an ester from carboxylic acid and an alcohol, which is C2H5OH here. Give the name of N. First of all, I'll show you the structural formula of N. It's a CH3. C and has a branched methyl group. 
than OH. I'll start, uh, I'll start numbering my largest carbon chain from the right side of the structure since it gives the least number to the carbon atom which has hydroxyl group attached to it. So one, two, three, four. Hence name of N is 3-methyl butane 1O. 3-methyl is because 3 methyl comes from the met this methyl group attached to the third carbon atom and butane one all butane comes from there because the largest carbon chain is consisting of four carbon atoms and one all means that the hydroxyl group is attached to the first carbon atom part two isoprenol is a liquid nickel acts as a catalyst for reaction one identify the type of catalyst is shown by nickel in reaction one so this is heterogeneous catalysis Part 3, draw the skeletal formula of Q and suggest one commercial use of Q. So Q is basically nothing but an ester which is forming from this carboxylic acid and this alcohol. So I'll draw the structure of the carboxylic acid given to us which is this. This reacts with ethanol. The uh, first part of the structure of an ester comes from the carboxylic acid. It has a structure which looks like this. C2O double bond comes from the carboxylic acid. This OH will now be removed and H from the, from the alcohol will now be removed and this oxygen will now be attached to this carbon atom and then it continues. So O, C2H5. Hydrogen from here and OH hydroxyl group from carboxylic acid. They merge and form water molecule. So the skeletal formula of Q is... This carbon atom over here is attached to O via double bond and there is a methyl group attached to the second carbon atom. Commercial use for asters is usually in perfume industry. Part E, P can be produced as shown. Part 1, the progress of reaction 1 can be monitored using infrared spectroscopy. One absorption that can be used to monitor the progress of this reaction is that of C2Cl bond at 730 per centimeter identify another absorption that can be used to monitor the progress of this reaction in your answer you should refer to the specific bond and its corresponding absorption rate in wave numbers so c to c double bond will not be there in the spectroscopy of the product forming over here which is the chloride halogen alkane at around 1500 to 1680 per centimeter. Part 2 state the reagents needed for reaction 2. So reaction 2 is halogenoalkane has now become an nitrile. This is due to KCN. This needs KCN. Part 3, name the type of reaction that occurs in reaction 3. So a nitrile group has now been changed to a carboxylic acid. This requires water and a, and a concentrated acid. So this is hydrolysis because there is addition of water molecule. Part 4, the yield of reaction 1 is very low. Explain why. So I'll draw the uh, structural formula of the reactant reacting over here. This is C to Cl. 
C to C double bond and CH3 here and CH3 here. When this reacts with HCl, there are chances that Cl might attach to um, this end. If Cl attaches to this end and forms a halogenoalkane, it will be forming a tertiary halogen alkene. And if CO attaches to this N over here, to this carbon atom, this will be forming a primary halogen alkene. And you all should know that tertiary carbocations are more stable than primary carbocations due to more positive inductive effect of more alkyl groups near to that bond. So yield of reaction 1 is low because Primary carbocations are less stable as compared to, uh, and the one forming in our question is actually primary carbocations. So that's is so that is the reason why the yield of this product forming is less. And the reason to this less stability is because primary carbocations less positive inductive effect of alkyl groups okay so this concludes our today's paper thank you for watching